Welcome to the expanding Job Entry Pathways in Agri-Food project. You're here because you may be grappling with the intricate dynamics of time, obstacles, and the financial investments required for recruiting and retaining employees in the agri-food sector. We're genuinely thrilled to have you join us on this journey, where together we'll delve into forward-thinking strategies for recruitment and retention. Our overarching goal is about empowerment, equipping you with transformative insights to redefine your perspectives on equity, diversity, and inclusion, for short, EDI, as we navigate the realms of talent acquisition and employee retention within this vital industry. Agenda. In today's session, we'll introduce you to First Work and how our association supports employers. We'll explore valuable labor market insights from Ontario's workforce development boards to enhance your decision-making processes, and you'll also be equipped with a clear five-step approach to developing and implementing an effective EDI strategy. The goal is that you will leave this session with the tools and knowledge needed to review and update your current recruitment and retention practices. About us. FirstWork is an association representing over 100 employment service provider agencies across Ontario. These employment service providers offer a range of services for job seekers and businesses, including resume development, skills training, for examples in areas such as customer service, and a direct access to an expansive network of both employers and job seekers. Like other associations, First Work is a hub for our sector, workforce development stakeholders. Our primary goal is to facilitate better connections within thriving workforce development ecosystems by raising awareness about the support services offered by ESPs to employers and job seekers. This expanding Job Entry Pathways in Agri-Food project is a showcase of what this network is capable of. Supporting employers, through challenges that impact Ontario's economic capability. Now that you know who First Work is, let's delve into what an employment service provider, an ESP, is. First and foremost, ESPs are fundamentally different from temp agencies. ESPs serve as facilitators bridging the needs of job seekers and employers and are funded through provincial and federal funding to provide their services at absolutely no cost, unlike temp agencies that charge fees for time-specific hiring. For job seekers, ESPs serve as an instrumental guide into the workforce. For employers, ESPs are your own mini HR team. ESPs have dedicated professionals known as job developers who specialize in collaborating with local businesses. These practitioners facilitate wage subsidies tailored to alleviate costs related to the hiring and training of new employees. ESPs offer a unique database of pre-screened local talent. These job seekers undergo thorough screening processes to align with specific job requirements, presenting a valuable asset for employers, especially in the face of challenges posed by a competitive labor market. This type of service sets ESPs apart from typical platforms like Indeed, where you might post a job for a floor supervisor and receive applicants for an accounting role. Better yet, job coaches are another valuable resource. These practitioners ensure a smooth transition for new employees, aiding in retention by providing on-the-job guidance. In summary, ESPs serve as facilitators bridging the needs of job seekers and employers, fostering a symbiotic relationship through a range of tailored services and resources. Employer One Survey Findings First Work and our network ESPs collaborate closely with community stakeholders, notably workforce planning boards, to design impactful workforce development strategies. Workforce development networks like ours leverage existing community-driven resources and insights so we can maximize success for both job seekers and employers. The next segment of this presentation covers insights gathered from planning boards spanning across Ontario. 
Let's dive in. The Employer One Survey is an annual initiative led by workforce planning boards throughout Ontario. This survey is a direct outreach to employers, aiming to capture their insights and contribute to a comprehensive understanding of the dynamics within the labour market. You might wonder why this survey holds significance. Well, consider it our compass, guiding us towards the needs, challenges, and opportunities prevalent in the labour market. It serves as a window into the real-world experiences of employers, offering a trove of data and knowledge that significantly shapes our strategic initiatives. The survey encompasses a wide array of critical topics, ranging from employers' hiring intentions and job vacancies to the specific skills they find essential. Top Employer Challenges Recruiting is challenging. It constantly demands innovation, adaptability, and a keen understanding of the evolving employment landscape. Based on the Employer One survey, the most common challenges, which you might be facing, are the following. Inadequate applicant pool, or the struggle to find a suitable number of applicants for job openings. Employers have also noted that applicants sometimes lack motivation, attitude, or interpersonal skills. Applicants have insufficient work experience required for their respective roles. You may like to pause the recording to review the other challenges the Employer One survey discovered. Current recruitment strategies. Despite the complexity of attracting the right talent, there are common recruitment strategies employed by businesses. You might be familiar with the following most common strategies. Number one, word of mouth. This is most common across the sector and subsector. Word of mouth leverages existing employee networks, fostering a sense of trust and credibility. However, it can be limiting, potentially excluding vast segments of eligible applicants. Number two, newspaper ads. A traditional method, casting a wide net to reach a broad network of potential applicants. Declining newspaper readership particularly among younger generations, poses a challenge. Number three, job fairs. Job and career fairs provide an excellent opportunity to connect with a large pool of potential applicants in a condensed time frame. It's crucial to note that diversifying recruitment strategies is imperative for building the broadest and most inclusive candidate pool. A multifaceted approach enhances reach, attracts diverse talents, and contributes to the development of a robust and inclusive workforce. Feel free to pause and review additional insights on employer-identified challenges. Newcomer talent. In the dynamic landscape of today's workforce, championing diversity and inclusivity isn't just a goal, it's a necessity. Newcomer talent is a primary source of untapped labor but existing strategies you're using for hiring might not align with how they are approaching the job market. To be successful in tapping into newcomer talent pools, you must intentionally put in place practices unique to their journey. Research has shown that nearly three quarters of employers face challenges recruiting newcomers. Let's explore two of those challenges. Scarcity of newcomer and immigrant applicants. Many businesses report a lack of applications from newcomer or immigrants for their job openings. We see an ongoing misalignment between employers and job seekers on where and how best to apply for an opportunity. Without standard recruiting practices, job seekers can miss out on an opportunity if they're not connected to the right avenues. On the other hand, competition for those qualified candidates is very high. Competition for qualified candidates. Due to the perceived labor shortage, companies face tough competition from other employers in securing top qualified candidates. Employers willing to do additional training or remove unnecessary requirements to a role, for example, that they must have Canadian experience or a certain number of years of experience 
have better luck in securing talent long term. Adjusting your expectations for right fit hiring may open your talent pool of hiring. You may want to pause the recording to review the other diversifying challenges. Reasons for separation. In every workforce, gaining insight into the reasons behind employee departures or separations is vital for shaping effective retention and recruitment strategies. From the employer's perspective, employees most often leave due to their own desires, resignation or retirement, or at an employer's behest, dismissal or layoff due to technology. From an employee's perspective, the reasons for separation are most often due to lack of competition wages or salary, particularly if an employee feels their compensation is not competitive with industry standards. Dissatisfaction with the job is also a major contributing factor, including items like a lack of flexibility, poor work culture, or inadequate job responsibilities. On the other hand, personal health issues can also impact an employee's tenure. Health concerns due to personal well-being may lead employees to exit their positions to prioritize their health. This does include mental health caused by personal challenges or work itself. Workforce Recruitment Best Practices Having explored the challenges, let's pivot to the proven best practices recognized by employers in overcoming these hurdles. Recruitment Best Practices To elevate your competitiveness in the recruitment landscape, consider focusing on key strategies that resonate with your potential candidates. Firstly, prioritize the development and promotion of a positive company culture. Highlight factors such as work-life balance, inclusivity, collaborative teamwork, and a supportive work environment. These elements contribute to a workplace where employees feel valued and engaged. Next, embrace diversity and inclusion by implementing concrete policies and practices that ensure equal opportunities and representation for everyone. This commitment not only enhances workplace culture, but also broadens the talent pool by attracting individuals from diverse backgrounds. Additionally, invest in building a strong employer brand that effectively communicates your company's unique attributes, mission, and culture. A compelling employer brand significantly influences how potential candidates perceive your organization, making it a critical aspect of your recruitment strategy. You may want to pause the recording to delve into the detailed best practices for more comprehensive understanding. Workforce Best Practices To boost your recruitment efforts, consider implementing an employee referral program offering incentives to your current workforce for referring qualified candidates. This leverages their networks, fostering high quality referrals and building stronger team connections. While this approach is valuable, it's equally important to diversify your recruitment channels. Utilize online job boards, social media, industry-specific websites, and recruitment agencies to broaden your reach. Also, employers must stay proactive by staying updated on recruitment trends and embracing emerging technologies. Leveraging innovative tools like AI for resume screening and video interviews to streamline processes and set your organization apart. Streamlining the hiring process not only simplifies and expedites recruitment, but also benefits potential candidates while lightening the burden on your team. Take a moment to pause and delve into the detailed best practices for a more comprehensive understanding. Workforce Retention Best Practices Now, let's explore strategies to retain employees. Retention Best Practices To set your organization apart in the competitive landscape of talent acquisition, consider implementing the following strategies. First and foremost, ensure your compensation packages including salary and benefits, are competitive within your industry and region. Conduct thorough market research to attract and retain top-tier talent, and explore additional perks like bonuses, profit sharing, or equity options if feasible. 
Highlight your commitment to professional development by showcasing growth and advancement opportunities within your organization. Offer training programs, mentorship initiatives, or tuition reimbursement to support employees in achieving their career goals. These strategies are not just about the perks. They represent transformative elements in the quest for talent. Creating a workplace that is viewed not just as a job, but as a career destination is a strategic investment in long-term success. It fosters an environment where employees feel valued, supported, and empowered to thrive both personally and professionally. Take a moment to pause and delve into the detailed best practices for a more comprehensive understanding. Additional retention strategies include Prioritizing a supportive work environment that values each individual and promotes a culture of respect and mutual support. Cultivate open communication channels, actively recognize achievements, and foster an atmosphere where everyone feels supported. Additionally, incorporating work-life balance through initiatives such as flexible work arrangements, remote work options, flexible hours, or compressed work weeks to accommodate the diverse needs of your team. Furthermore, establish robust recognition and rewards programs to celebrate exceptional performance and achievements. Consider implementing bonuses, incentives, employee of the month or year initiatives, and peer recognition programs to ensure that employees feel valued and appreciated for their contributions. You may want to pause the recording to review the best practices in more detail. Expanding Job Entry Pathways in Agri-Food, Building Equitable Change in the Agri-Food Sector As we noted earlier, championing diversity in your workforce isn't just a goal, it's a necessity. We covered specifically newcomer hiring practices in an earlier slide. Now we're diving further into diversifying your workforce. What do we mean by diversifying? Incorporating equity, diversity, and inclusion, known as EDI, into your workforce recruitment and retention strategy. Embedding these approaches are pivotal for long-term success. Over the next several slides, we will highlight five steps to help businesses begin their EDI journey. Before we delve into our discussion, it's crucial to clarify the distinction between equality and equity, as these terms are often used interchangeably but hold distinct meanings. Equality entails providing each individual or group with the same resources or opportunities. As illustrated on the screen, consider the scenario of everyone being given the same standard bike. It's clear that this one-size-fits-all approach doesn't cater to the diverse needs of each person. For instance, Person one faces challenges due to disability, rendering the bike impractical, while person number four encounters safety concerns with a bike that is too large. Equity, on the other hand, recognizes and acknowledges the diverse circumstances of each individual and ensures that resources and opportunities are allocated to achieve an equal outcome. In the image below, you can observe that person number one now has a bike modified to accommodate their disability, and person number four has a smaller bike tailored to their stature. It's important to recognize that both equality and equity have their places in the workforce. For example, equality in a workplace context might include everyone adhering to a specific work schedule, for example, nine to five, or following a dress code. Equity comes into play when considering workplace accommodations, recognizing and addressing individual needs to create an environment where everyone can thrive. Understanding and navigating these concepts are fundamental to fostering an inclusive and equitable workplace. Now that we have defined equality and equity, let's talk about EDI, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Unlocking the potential of EDI lies in tailoring a strategy that uniquely fits your organization. This isn't a case of one size fits all. What proves effective for one business may not necessarily be the solution for another, 
and this point cannot be emphasized enough. Consider the unique factors at play within your business, the current demographic composition, the scale of operations, available resources, and the level of leadership buy-in. These variables significantly influence the success of your EDI implementation. Consider what EDI would look like in Toronto versus Sault Ste. Marie, or a company with over 1,000 employees like Bell Canada versus a mom and pop shop, or younger leaders like Gen Z versus baby boomers. All these factors and more will play a role in what your EDI strategy is and how it is implemented. For that reason, crafting and executing an EDI strategy is a journey not a sprint. A well thought out plan typically spans two to five years, acknowledging that the goal isn't a complete overhaul, but a continuous, intentional evolution of your company's identity. Your strategy. As we embark on the journey of creating an equitable, diverse and inclusive workplace, it's crucial to recognize that this transformation is not an overnight process. As leaders, it's imperative to align our aspirations with practical considerations. Here are some critical questions. What culture do you aspire to foster? Consider the values, behaviors, and atmosphere that align with your vision. What reputation do you envision both internally and externally? Think about the perception you want your employees and the public to have about your company. What lasting impact do you aim to leave as an employee or leader? Reflect on the legacy you want to create within your organization. In the upcoming slides, I'll present five actionable steps to integrate into your workforce development strategy immediately. Remember, your EDI strategy is a living document, a roadmap guiding your company toward a workplace embodying the principles of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Let's delve into each facet to gain a deeper understanding of this strategic journey. Conducting a baseline survey. The first crucial step in our journey towards equitable change involves conducting a comprehensive baseline survey. This initial phase is foundational, providing insights into our organization's current state, prevailing culture, and the overall satisfaction of our employees. The purpose of this survey is twofold. Firstly, it brings clarity by identifying existing gaps in equitable competency within our organization. Secondly, it serves as a compass, offering invaluable insights that will guide the subsequent actions of our organizational leaders. To execute this survey effectively, organizations can collaborate with their human resources department or seek assistance from external consultants. Each question posed should have a distinct purpose, fostering transparency and ensuring employees feel secure in responding authentically. Building trust is paramount. Genuine change hinges on employees' confidence in their leaders and the sincerity of their motives. A crucial post-survey step involves desegregating the results breaking down the data for a nuanced understanding. For instance, if we find that 82% of employees enjoy their work, it is equally important to focus on the 18% expressing dissatisfaction. Businesses should be curious about who makes up this 18%. What are the themes and trends they can learn from? Through careful analysis, we might discover that 90% of dissatisfied respondents are women, a demographic constituting only 5% of the entire workforce. This revelation underscores a significant issue requiring immediate attention. Step two, company culture. Enhancing a company's culture is paramount for long-term success. It transcends products and services, encapsulating the very essence of who we are as a business. 
To change company culture, you must reflect on the existing company culture. Take the time to assess whether employees feel genuinely valued and acknowledged, and be proactive in identifying and rectifying any discriminatory practices that may have become ingrained. Leadership involvement is paramount in this process as it sets the tone from the top and cascades down through the organization. Leveraging desegregated data obtained from baseline services to design targeted strategies that address specific cultural challenges. Recognize that a team's success and productivity are directly tied to their perceived value in the workplace, emphasizing that a happy team is a productive team capable of achieving targets, milestones, and deadlines. Committing to resetting the company culture goes beyond change for the sake of it. It's about building a workplace where every member feels valued, respected, and integral to collective success. As you contemplate your current company culture, ask, why is change necessary? Why should we embrace this change? How can we effectively implement these changes? What specific changes are needed to foster a positive and inclusive culture? By addressing these questions and actively engaging in the cultural transformation process, we set the stage for a workplace where every individual contributes to and shares in the collective success of the organization. Step three, policy revamp. The phrase culture eats policy for breakfast resonates deeply with the transformative influence of organizational culture, often surpassing the impact of meticulously crafted policies. It underscores that the prevailing culture within an organization holds immense power in shaping behavior, decision-making, and overall effectiveness. Even the most well-crafted policies can be rendered ineffective when overshadowed by a toxic culture lacking accountability. That said, having policies in place can not only enhance workplace culture, but can also pave the way for a cultural shift which may be critical for recruiting and retaining untapped talent. In crafting your policies, clarity and accessibility are paramount. Each policy should be concise, ideally one to two pages, using language that everyone can easily understand. To enhance comprehension, provide examples that illustrate expected behaviors and actions. Importantly, these policies must be consistently applied across the business to maintain trust and fairness. In the unfortunate event of non-compliance, clearly identify the complaints process, outline investigation procedures, and specify consequences. This approach ensures that your policies are not just documents, but living guides that contribute to a workplace culture of transparency, understanding, and accountability. By addressing these aspects when crafting policies, we pave the way for a cultural shift. Step three, policy examples. As indicated on the previous slide, a policy is a set of guidelines, principles, or rules a business establishes to regulate and guide decision-making, actions, and behaviors. Policies serve as a framework for consistency, transparency, and compliance with legal and ethical standards. Policy examples can include diversity and inclusion policies that may serve as your commitment to creating an environment where every employee regardless of background, feels valued and heard. Recruitment and selection policy is a pivotal tool, but let's reimagine this policy, infusing it with practices that actively promote diversity and eradicate biases from the hiring process. By doing so, you not only attract a broader range of talents, but also set a standard for fairness and equity in your recruitment efforts. Psychological health and safety policy. The well being of your employees extends beyond the physical realm, and our commitment to their mental health is paramount. As you review or establish a psychological health and safety policy, prioritize creating a workplace that supports the mental well being of every team member, 
By fostering an environment that values mental health, you can contribute to a workforce that is not only productive, but also compassionate and understanding. Designated Holidays and Floating Holidays Policy Your employees come from diverse backgrounds, each with unique cultural and religious observances. The Designated Holidays and Floating Holidays Policy should reflect your respect for this diversity. By actively addressing these policies, organizations can create a more inclusive and equitable workplace, acknowledging and accommodating the diverse needs of their workforce. You may want to pause the recording to review additional policies for a more inclusive workplace. Step 4. Accountability Framework Emphasizing accountability is paramount in this journey towards creating a positive workplace culture. Policies, surveys, and conversations are essential, but their impact is limited without accountability at all levels. When an issue arises, here are some key considerations. Number one, preparedness. Are you ready to address the issue promptly and effectively? Number two, communication. How will you communicate the outcome to the individual offender and the team? Number three, enforcement. Will you enforce the consequences outlined in your policy consistently? Number four, termination. Are you prepared to take the necessary steps, including termination if required? Number five, leadership accountability. How will you hold leaders accountable for fostering a positive culture? What ongoing training will be implemented to ensure leadership effectiveness? Number six, self-reflection. What if you, as a leader, are part of the issue? Are you ready for self-reflection and change? While accountability is undoubtedly challenging, it yields substantial benefits in the long run. It ensures that policies are not just words on paper, but principles upheld in practice. By addressing issues head on, communicating transparency, and holding everyone, including leaders accountable, you foster an environment where positive change is not only encouraged, but expected. Step five, review and repeat. As previously mentioned, the implementation of a strategy typically spans two to five years with a lifetime commitment to maintenance. It is crucial to allocate dedicated time each year for reflection on the past and strategic planning for the future, establishing concrete goals. Embrace the idea that adapting your strategy is a natural part of the process. Be open to change as you acquire new insights or when your available resources undergo shifts. Flexibility in strategy allows for continuous improvement and alignment with evolving circumstances. EDI Recap As we conclude the EDI segment of this recording, it's important to remember that change can be initiated. Start by conducting a baseline survey. Use your findings to address and redefine company culture. Then, review and revamp your policies to ensure they align with the culture you are trying to foster. Finally, establish an accountability framework and review and repeat year over year. Connect with us. As we conclude this recording, here's how to continue your journey with employment service providers in the agri-food sector. Active participation and engagement are pivotal to your success, and we're here to support you every step of the way. First and foremost, reach out to us. We'll help you connect with an ESP in your area answer questions, and provide guidance on your workforce development journey. Reach out to programs at firstwork.org and we'll be delighted to connect you to the right resources. You can also learn more about our agri-food employment resources by visiting our website at firstwork.org forward slash agra dash food dash pathways forward slash to explore our network of agri-food employment partners and find a wealth of information, resources, and connections to support your agri-food journey.